My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on the 13th of June, we celebrate the Feast of St. Anthony of Padua. Actually, Anthony was born not in Padua, but in Lisbon, in Portugal, to a Portuguese noble family. When he was baptized, he was called Ferdinand. At the age of 15, he joined the Augustinian monastery in Lisbon. And after two years, by his own request, he was shifted to the Augustinian monastery of Coimbra. The reason is he was disturbed to stay in Lisbon because of the visits by his family members and friends. At that time, Coimbra was the capital of Portugal and the monastery of the Augustinians was famous for scriptural studies. There, Antoni studied scripture so well that someone said, if we were to lose the manuscript of the sacred scripture, he could reproduce everything as it is. In 1219, five Franciscans who were on their way to Morocco in North Africa came and stayed at their place. That was a turning point in his life. Because the following year, in 1220, these five Franciscans were killed and Don Pedro, the crown prince, brought back their bodies and honored in one of the big churches of Combra. And because of that, Antoni wanted to become a Franciscan to go to Africa as a missionary. His brothers loved him and the permission was difficult, but because of his insistence, he was granted the permission to go in 1221. But due to illness, he had to come back to Portugal. But God's providence were different because of storm, the ship in which he was traveling went straight to Messina in Sicily in Italy. There he landed in one of the Franciscan monastery and he came to learn that there is a general chapter of the congregation in which the founder, St. Francis of Assisi himself, would be present. Therefore, he was interested to see Francis and went for the General Assembly. After the Assembly, since no provincial from Portugal came for the chapter, he was handed over to the provincial of Romagna, certain Gracian, and Father Gracian appointed him in a small monastery in Forli to say masses for the lay brothers and to help in the kitchen washing the plates and so on. For nine months he stayed there. But there was an ordination in Forli in which the main preacher failed to turn up and the eminent people present there were not willing to take up the preaching. So the superior told Anthony to say whatever the Holy Spirit inspires him. And he stood and preached to the newly ordained priest his zeal, his piety, his enthusiasm, his knowledge of the scripture was revealed. 
Father Gracian, the provincial, was so impressed, he wrote immediately to St. Francis that he should be made as preacher in the whole province of Romagna. And Francis replied by making St. Anthony or Anthony as the preacher of the whole of Italy and also as the master of theology to look after the theological formation of the whole congregation. From then on, Anthony would travel the breadth and length of Italy and work many, many wonders and miracles and would be known as Saint Anthony, the wonder worker. In 1231, he preached Lenten retreat, after which he was so tired that he wanted to take rest in the house of a friend. But he got sick and he knew his end was near and he decided to go to his favorite town, Padua. But on the way, he had to rest in the house of the poor clares, received the last sacrament and bread his last. In scripture, what we come to know is that long life is a blessing. But the short life of Saint Anthony, just 36 years old, teaches us that short life is also wood, provided there is a quality in it. And the quality of life is measured according to Saint Anthony based on the faith and love. If we have faith in God and love God and our fellow men, uh, human being, then length of life or shortness of life doesn't matter. In First John chapter 4, if we have love, God abides in us. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are in God as St. Paul would tell us in Romans 14, 8. Till today, St. Anthony, though he lived just 36 years, or, uh, years, is still alive because many still pray to him for his intercession. He is known for uh, interceding for those who lose their things and articles. In his life, once a novice stole away his prayer book, which was so precious to him because he had his sermons kept in sight. And he prayed to God, and suddenly an omen appeared in the sky. And because of that, the novice got frightened and brought back his lost prayer book to him. St. Anthony's life is inspiring, a life of faith, and love. Let us ask his intercession to be like him so that having a life of prayer and faith and love, we may have quality in our life. God bless.